Huge power increase and IPC gain over the Sand 2 architecture is on the menu for AMD's upcoming Ryzen 4000 CPU lineup, which we believe AMD will start talking a lot more about at CES in Las Vegas in early 2020. In this video, let's look at all the things we know about next-gen Ryzen 4000 series processors, such as release date, power and performance, and socket compatibility. Let's hit it. Hey, what is up, guys? It's Robin here on RBN Hardware. I hope you're doing fine. And so, what is up with Ryzen 4000 and what is it about it that makes it maybe possibly worth waiting for? So, AMD's upcoming 4th gen Ryzen will be bringing us the Sun 3 design, which will feature a deeply revisited architecture aiming to offer increased performance over the last gen Sun 2 architecture. AMD themselves have already said that Sun 3 will offer performance increase in line with the release of a new architecture. Yeah, we all remember about 15% increase as she with the release of Sun 2 Ryzen 3000 series, which surprised even AMD at its performance capabilities. And this seems to be the case this time as well. Now, several sources, including Tech Power Up and VCC F Tech, are all reporting around 17% increase in performance. Now, we're looking at 100 to 200 megahertz at least for the enterprise, you know, the Epic series, and potentially even higher higher increases for consumer grade products and of course an increase of IPC and core design. And speaking of cores, rumors are pointing towards AMD as sticking to the same core count as the 3rd gen SKUs, which seems reasonable as 16 cores and 32 threads for the 3950X is more than enough for most people already. Now, According to AMD, the Sun 3 design brings an entirely brand new CPU architecture, we've got significant IPC gains and faster clock speeds than ever seen before. So in terms of manufacturing process, AMD will be sticking to the 7 nanometer. EUV process, but 7 nanometer in itself shouldn't have much to do with the increased frequencies of the CPUs. Now, WCCF Tech is reporting that this is most likely because they want to reduce the number of masks that are required for production of Sun 3 uh, CPUs, which in turn will lead to increased yields. Sources are claiming an increase up to 50% in Sun 3 floating point units, or FPU for short, compared to Sun 2, while on integer operations, we shall see an increase. Of 10 to 12 percent an increase now a lot of technical stuff and numbers here guys but important takeaways integer operations are what most general consumer app uses and floating point heavy applications are a bit more geared towards server market applications so nonetheless sam 3 has the potential to be the big game changer for the industry but in terms of design again sam 3 is a new architecture that comes with a few design updates over the previous generation for example there was a major change in the cache design in the Epic presentation, which showed that Sun 3 would be offering an undefined cache design, which should essentially double the cache that each Sun 3 core could have access to compared to Sun 2, and this could have a huge impact on the gaming performance. Now, remember game cache AMD talked so much about prior to the launch of Sun 2. Now, more CPU cache should theoretically improve the gaming performance, but, but right now we don't have that much info about this. We're gonna have to wait and see how much more cache the Sun 3 processors actually get. But speaking of core count, Ryzen 4000 will likely stay on the same number of cores as Ryzen 3000, but with increased IPC and frequencies and possibly even more cache. This will definitely put AMD in an even better position for all the markets and gaming in particular, where Intel still has the upper hand when we're looking at raw gaming performance for certain games where in games where high IPC and frequency matter the most. We're going to see AMD competing very aggressively with Intel with Ryzen 4000 and the best thing about it, rumors have it that Ryzen 4000 might as well be compatible with the current AM4 socket, meaning that you might as well be able to keep your whole system and only pick up a new processor and enjoy all the benefits that the Ryzen 4000 brings, possibly most likely not Gen 4 of course, uh, that is Gen 4 PCIe Express. Especially for us gamers who care about silky smooth frame rate and fast response time, Ryzen 4000 looks like it's going to be the ultimate processor uh, for gaming in 2020. So let's talk about clock speed, so, so what is expected here? Well, it seems like we're gonna get up to 2 to 300 megahertz boost, which will bring the Ryzen 4000 close to the 9th generation Intel 
Intel Core processors. And so we're looking at close to 5 GHz in boost should definitely be possible that along with the massive IPC increase and general changes in the architecture should give us a fantastic processor for sure. But the only slight concern I'm having is whether the 4000 series will be able to retain the advertised boost clock speed. We've seen plenty of issues with current gen a Ryzen only being able to reach the advertised boost clock speed for very short periods of time to then drop a few hundred megahertz and so this is something that AMD needs to improve on and as we know 3rd gen Ryzen have gotten a few BIOS updates fixing some of these issues but there is still work to be done here and by the way guys I'm very curious to know have you had any issues with 3rd gen Ryzen please let me know in the comments below I've seen these issues on my processors as well and I'm hoping AMD can get a fix to this as soon as possible hopefully bringing more stable and high clock speed to current Ryzen processors even during heavy workloads oh yeah I do have a fate in AMD in this matter with that said let's talk about release date when can we expect Ryzen 4000 to hit the shelves now because AMD haven't spoken out too much about the 4th gen Ryzen yet we still aren't sure when this is gonna happen but rumors have it that late August to October in 2020 could be the date that AMD aims for now I'm going to keep you guys informed with this with more details as they unfold regarding 4th gen Ryzen and the Sandria architecture now if August seemed like a long wait and you're looking for you know you want to upgrade your PC right now I actually made a video a few days ago covering the best budget gaming processors for early 2020 and you'll find that video down uh, below now in the meantime let me know what you think about Ryzen 4000 so far